Hi, welcome to LightsOnAbbey.com. I'm David. If you like what you see today, please like and subscribe. Today we're going to talk about a prop that many of us have and many of us don't. I was unable to get these last year. Really big lights or RVLs from Home Depot. They also have them at Target and some other stores. We're going to go through the process of converting these so you can add them to your light show. For today's project, you're going to rob your tool chest and get some of your tools out. Um, you're going to need a soldering iron, some solder, some flux, a Dremel tool if you have it, if you don't, a sharp utility knife. Make sure you have safety gloves and safety glasses, of course. You're going to need a hammer, a scratch awl, um, needle nose pliers, a precision uh, screwdriver, a couple of markers, a block of wood. You'll see why we use that in a minute. A uh, pair of cutters, a pair of close cuts, a compass, and a drill with a 12 millimeter step bit in it. These are things you'll need to get these made today. Go get them and let's get started. Okay, now we're gonna get through dismantling the bowl. Um, we don't need all the insides and we don't need the label, of course, so just follow me for a second, see how this thing comes apart. Just unscrew the globe, take it off, set it aside. Take off the label, it's not needed, of course. Inside the mechanism are one screw, or is one screw for the battery box. So take that out. Take the batteries out, they just snap back out. And there's three screws holding the mechanism in. So these three screws you need to keep. They're inside. Just stick them right out. And you're able to pull the mechanism right out of the uh, housing. Remember, save these screws because you're going to need them later when you want to put this thing back together. Set them aside and keep them in a safe place. And We'll be using those again in a second. Now the mechanisms part. Inside the housing are two shouldered washers or screws with washers on them that hold the test button in. So pull those out. Again, those are going to be thrown away. They're not needed at this point. And then the housing is completely out. Just set it aside. We're going to go back to that in a minute. On the bottom, you're going to pull the light bulb out, the switch out, and the little microprocessor out. There's four screws under here that hold it in place. These screws get discarded. They are not needed. So we're going to show you how to do three different methods for making these RBLs work and mounting your pixel bulbs in them. So once those screws are out, just grab the mechanism and pull it out because you're not going to need it anymore. And pick the bulb and take it out. You don't need that. At this point, take your Nino nose pliers. You can leave these parts in if you want, but I like to keep it clean, so I'm just gonna pull them all out. At this point, the last thing is this one, one battery um, end here, pull that out, and I have a screw. But that's how you take it apart and get it ready for the next step, which is putting the mounts in it for your pixel bolts. There's one thing I forgot to mention, and that's to save the rubber cover for the switch, the test switch, because you're gonna use that to waterproof the case. You literally just put it back in its place in the little square indent inside. You can see it inside. And just fill it up with some glue, and I'm using Gorilla Clear glue. I love this stuff. And I just fill up the cavity with Gorilla Clear glue and then that'll waterproof that with that rubber seal back in there. That's what it'll look like. You just set it aside and let it harden. I mentioned earlier we had three different ways to make these mounts. The first one requires you to cut out some plastic out of an old tub. This is just one I had laying around. It's clear plastic. You can use white. Probably white is preferable. You're going to take a compass. That's what I had the compass for. And you're going to make a three and a quarter inch circle on the plastic and then you're going to take your snips and snip out that snip out that circle so this is why you need left hand because the snips are turning left you can use right hand if you want but these were the first ones i found in my toolbox you know the difference between left and right handed snips right the colors of the handles so if you have a right hand and you want to use them, but you have to use 
a snip that'll turn is they're, they're designed to make a right or a left turn. You can't use straight cut snips because you just can't get them to turn. Once you have your disc cut, you're gonna drop them into the housing and make sure it fits. If it doesn't, trim it as needed. And inside, you're gonna see the three screw mounts that are inside. Take your marker and mark those because we're gonna drill those out so this plastic can drop down below the bosses. Just make a little mark, that's all you need. And pull that out. We're gonna drill those out. Um, sometimes the bit doesn't catch because it is a step bit and it doesn't really have a sharp point. But in order to make that easier, I just take a scratch hole and I poke a little hole in it. And that allows me to have a place for the drill bit to hold when it starts drilling. And you're gonna drill, drill these up just about a quarter inch maybe. And once you have those drilled, we need to check and make sure they fit. And the bosses are in the right place in the mechanism. And the bosses in the mechanism are those three little places the screws go in. And just set that down in and make sure that it snaps in, as you can see it does. So that's what you're looking for. Once those are snapped in, you need to make a decision on how you want the pixel space. I've decided this is a six pixel housing, so I'm just going to mark the center with a dot. That's where my middle pixel is going to go. And I'm going to set my compass at two inches to draw a two inch circle. So we're going to draw a two inch circle. And once the two inch circle is drawn, we're going to just eyeball where we're going to put the other pixels. So you're going to draw your circle and it's going to end up something like this with marks on it for where you're going to put the pixels. Once you have it, have it marked as this one is, you literally just drill out the pixel holes now and you're going to push your step bit all the way through to the 12 millimeter part. All the way through. You're going to do that six times. Luckily, this is a sharp bit. I forgot to scratch all those, didn't I? But it's good. Don't cut anyway. And you can also use a... a if you want to use a... You know, a step bit that's a half inch, just know that these are going to be a little sloppy. Um, but, you know, you can put glue on it if they are hot glue in. You know, everybody's used to hot glue in this hobby, so there's always the opportunity to do that as well. So once you get your six holes drilled, check them and see that everything works by inserting a pixel. Come on it. So here's a pixel, and let's pop it in the center. And you see it snaps right in and it's ready to go in the housing. Drop it in the housing below the bosses and we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, now that we have all of our discs or mounts for our pixels done, we're going to modify the battery case so we can use the uh, mount in the, in the original housing. So you're going to have to cut along the lines of the battery case. You can use a utility knife if you want a small saw or whatever. Be careful, use a knife. They are very sharp. Um, I'm going to use a Dremel tool because I have one. Um, these are called zip wheels. Zip wheels, people call them many things. I'm going to use it to cut off right along these edges. At this point, just snap out the battery case because it's all cut. The plastic's going to be hot. Make sure you have gloves on and just peel off what's hanging there. You're going to have pixelated this. I'm not going to go through that. You all know how to solder pixels and make this happen. You're going to snap that in, pull your wires out, and you're going to take your bulb mount and take the three little screws you took out, and you're going to screw them in, and that's going to hold that plate in place. Okay, I'm going to show you an e another way to do it now that we've done one way. This is probably the second easiest way to do it. You're just going to mark on the back of your battery cases where you're going to put your six pixels. And remember, I went with six pixels. And there is no magic here. Just make marks. You're going to take your 12 millimeter step bit and just drill six holes. Like you would Coro for props or whatever. Use your 12 millimeter step bit. Remember, I got that on Amazon, but you can get it wherever you want. But once you've got the six holes drilled, you're done and ready. At this point, you pixelate it like you would any other prop. Do your solder for your wires and put your pigtails out of it or however you're going to make it happen. There you go. Literally, it's all drilled and ready to go. And goes right back in the housing with the three screws you originally used, originally took out. The final, the only tool you'll need for the final way to make your RBLs come to life with pixels is 
the Phillips screwdriver we used earlier. You, of course, need to know somebody that has a 3D printer or you can order these. I got these from Nipple Trick. I'll put the link in the description so you can get them, but you literally pixelate, do your soldering, drop them in, put the three screws in, and you're done. Okay, since we're gonna be drilling with the power tools, don't forget to put on your safety equipment. Um, I've chosen to make my RBLs look like a long string of Christmas lights. So I got a 100-foot cord from Home Depot and I cut it into six-foot sections. And I'm gonna feed it through the side of the casing and drill holes in the thing. Make sure you don't drill the holes too big. I did and I gotta fix that, but that's okay. You're gonna drill holes in the either side, just with your 12 on your step bit. Again, make sure you don't go too, too deep. Once you've got the holes drilled in either side, you're gonna take your wire and you're gonna feed your wire in from either side. And you can see why I'm doing this because it makes it look like a string of Christmas lights once they're all back together. So the way we're displaying these in our yard is we bought some shepherd hooks. We got them on sale. Um, we'll put the link in the description where we got them. And of course you can put them on anything you want. We decided on the shepherd hooks. But once you get the wires through, you strip them with your wire strippers. So you can solder your pixels on. And one thing I do so the wire doesn't pull back out is I take a zip tie and put it on the inside of the cup and tighten it up and that way when I pull the when I pull the uh, cable back out it won't pull all the way out so I don't have to worry about pulling the wire out and pulling the pixels out so I tighten that up and that makes a, a nice joint so when you pull the cable back the wires won't pull out of the cup so when you're done you're gonna have nice blinky blinky lights RBLs everybody wants them now you can make your own Hope you liked the uh, video we just made. If you did, please subscribe and like and come back and see more. We're going to try and do one once a month. So thanks for watching.